and his pen, because of the olden times, not the flowing ink pen, the deep ink pen, he was always kept in ink. He did not know when his master will speak. Immediately to write down. And today we have the nine magnanimous volumes of Vivekananda's words. It is to that 24-year-old boy, Joseph M. Goodwin, who sacrificed his whole life for Vivekananda. <laughs> and at the end of one week, the employers of Vivekananda gave him $25. He returned it back. What $25? I will give 25 years of my life to my master. He never accepted money. But his pen was ready to take down every word of what Vivekananda spoke. He got, travels with him from America all the way. All through India, he takes down the notes and notes and notes. The next day, it is ready because Vivekananda wants the proof, wants to check if everything is all right. Such hard work he did. Unfortunately, he developed TB and pneumonia. When Vivekananda was resting in Almora and the Himalayas, he tried to recoup from his health and etc. He passed away in Wuti when he was only 27 years old. As soon as the telegram went to Vivekananda in Almora in the Himalayas, for two days Vivekananda withdrew his mind. He kept mound of silence, tears rolling down his eyes and said, it is as if my right hand has gone. My man of steel, Joseph Ain said, my faithful goodwill, he was as like my right hand. And he has gone, I have no more to speak. So each prophet, each world teacher comes with his arranged battalion, army soldiers, to work out their cause and to give something for the world. Afterwards, hardly you wake on the smoke. And after starting the Ramakrishna mission and organization and everything else, Again goes back to America for two more years, rather one and a half years. And he knew his end is coming. He had told to some of his disciples, I shall not live to see 40. People were shocked. He was 39 years plus. And he had told, I shall not live to see 40. And by the time the freedom movement had started, it was becoming heated up, 1902, and people went and asked, Swamiji, you have started the Ramakrishna mission, you have started the so much of work, and the freedom movement because of your inspiration, etc., is getting up. What do you mean not living to see 40? And do you know what he says? He said, What I have done for my country, India, it shall learn from me for the next 15 centuries. How many, how many years work did he did? Just 9 years physically. 1893, September 21, uh, September 11th. 1902, July 4th, the man has gone, leaving his body. And July 4th becomes the American Independence Day. And that day he wrote a poem on the Song of Freedom. And he says, what I have done for India, it shall learn from me for the next 15 centuries. My dear friends, it is hardly 107, 6 years since he left his body. But he says in one of his letters, it may be good, his quote, it may be good that I shall give up my body like a used garment, but I shall not cease to work. I shall inspire men everywhere until the world shall know that it is one with God. I shall not cease to work. My body has gone, my spirit leaves. And whosoever reads my letters, reads my writings and speeches, my spirit will enter into them and make them work for the good of India. On the one hand, each soul is potentially divine. That is your birthright. That is my birthright. That is a sweeper's birthright. That is a prime minister's birthright. Potential divinity. That is the climax of this message. You may be a scientist, somebody may be a doctor, somebody may be a clerk, somebody may be a businessman, but what is it hidden inside is the potential divinity. The goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature, external and internal. External science, you have to control nature. You have to fine tune nature if you want the truth. Internal nature is your own mind. The mind understands the mind. One is called the Paravidya, another is called the Aparavidya. 
the way God put it in a beautiful language. Control external nature, control internal nature. Do this either by work or worship or psychic control or philosophy. By one or more or all of these and be free. This is the whole of religion. Doctrines, dogmas, temples are all but secondary details. What we want is real freedom. And what a wonderful message he gave to all of us within that nine year period which I find so enjoyable whenever I recite it for myself. Shrunvant Vishve Amritasya Putraha What is he addressing? All of you, me and all the millions of people, Vishve, the people in the world. Who are you? Not ordinary body mind complex. Amritasya Putraha, what a wonderful name. Children of immortal bliss. What a joy it is to know that I am a child of joy. But unfortunately people don't enjoy, they kill joy today. In the name of addictions, in the name of drugs, in the name of all sorts of things at the weekends. You are kill joy, where are you enjoying? Where is the Tamil Tattva? In a bottle? Where is the Tamil Tattva in ordinary things? Flimsy, worthless, useless? which creates more problems because Bangalore has got a wonderful uh, history of 1700 diverse cases pending in 2008 between the age group of 30 to 38 is that India which we want in the future in the next 50 years where is the Kamal Tattva? we have to bring back that message in institutions in the young minds and the next sentence first sentence is what? Shrunvanta Vishwe Amritasya Putraha Listen to me, O oh children of the immortals. Second sentence is, Aye, Hamani, Divyani, All even those who are in the highest years, come and listen to me. That Rishi was so proud of his realization, he invited the gods also, come. Don't enjoy too much there. Come and listen to me. What should you listen? Aditya Varnam Tamasaf Parasthat. I have realized a great Purusha. Mahapurusha of realizing which when the sun rises darkness is dispelled Aditya is the sun god when he rises 5 o'clock, 5, 10, just gone, vanished Tamasa Parastat Tame Oriditva Ati Mrutyu Meti by realizing him alone we shall conquer death Ati Mrutyu Na Anya Pantha Vidya Deva there is no other thing other than this. No other path. Follow me. Follow me. And the last sentence Vivekananda gives a free translation of it. It is very famous today. Uttishthata, Jagrata, Prapyavara, Nivodhata. Arise, awake. The original translation is approach the great ones and seek the truth. But Vivekananda put it in a free translation in English as arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. India is waiting for all of us, he is waiting for all of us to receive this message with our profession, with our career, with our interests. Combine it with spirituality. Combine with the divine, divine feelings inside you and make the great India, a revolutionary India. When he says, on our work seems the coming of the India of the future. She is there waiting, she is only sleeping, once more awake and see her seated on her eternal throne, rejuvenated, more glorious than she ever was, this motherland of ours. That tremendous faith he gave to the people, he, on the one hand, had his own strong lessons to give to the people. We have to learn the lessons in a hard way. On the other hand, he was so thrilled with the glory of the Indian children. You can do something for the country. So, 106 years, Many organizations, many groups, many uh, cultural associations have come and are coming and coming and coming in hook and corner. I shall just tell one incident, one uh, news which I just got a couple of uh, months back and close my talk. Suddenly it appeared in the Indian Express in one of the Tamil papers of a vegetable seller in Tirunal Valley in Tamil Nadu. That vegetable seller calls himself Vivekananda Dasa. His name is Mr. Selvam, 41 year old man selling vegetables in the junction of Tirunalveli. What is the news all about? 